Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming along. First off, it's a privilege to have you all choose to come to my talk to learn about A-Frame with me. We're going to be going through a few things today. We're going to cover off what is virtual reality, why I love virtual reality, a little bit of history of virtual reality, and then we'll jump into some A-Frame basics. So what is virtual reality? Wikipedia slide? Wrong. Best definition I could find on the internet is Mark Sent Labs. The use of computer technology to create a simulated environment. Pretty simple, makes sense. You can imagine what that means. Wikipedia does have a definition. It's a bit wordier, it's a bit longer, it has a few more things in it. it includes sounds, sensations, etc. I'm not really interested in that. I'm interested in pictures on a computer on my head. So why do I love virtual reality? What's really exciting? The web, for me, has always been about is sharing your imagination. Virtual reality lets you share imagination better. Your imagination was in your head, but now your imagination is on somebody else's head. <laughs> it's great. All right, so that's it's great. Quick history of what virtual reality is. Where has it come from and where have we been? Whoa! We'll leave that there. <laughs> got another one over here, it's great. Um, oh, I've got an in and an out. Is that okay, guys? Are we, are we fine? Cool, all right. Um, so first it was science fiction. The sort of agreed upon what was the first mention of virtuality is a book called Pygmalion's Spectacles, which came out in 1935. And then we made some small technological strides. <laughs> with the Viewmaster which was released in 1939. It's not technically virtual reality, it's stereoscopic 3D vision, but, you know, it's done pretty great. This is an up-to-date model that used to look different. Then we really started hitting our strides in 1968. The Sword of Damocles, which is a great name, and I'll let you all look it up, because I forgot what it means, was the first augmented reality set that we've actually got. It's, it's pretty much pretty widely recommended and claimed that that is, and if you look at it, you'll understand why. 1968. This is an augmented reality set with six different computer things in it. Has head tracking, has motion, has vision, has 3D spaces in the world. 1968, crazy. Then you sort of jump all the way into the gaming world, which has really driven the explosion of virtual reality. 1991 to 1994, Sega put a lot of time into virtual reality and didn't actually get anything out. <laughs> 1995, the Virtual Boy came out, which is a sickness, migraine-inducing hell thing. <laughs> Ugh, little red box of doom. And then we jumped into the 2000s, and as you look, as you see, we sort of start jumping a lot faster through virtual reality software. Oculus Kickstarter was 2012. Google Cardboard came out in 2015. Gear VR, 2015. Then last year, the Oculus was released, the HTC Vive was released, the PlayStation VR was released, and Daydream came out last year as well. So we've, we're accelerating. We're going really fast now. So what about virtual reality on the web? which is where we're going. We're going to get there with A-Frame. VRML, 1994. Virtual reality markup language. Uh, it's a web standard. It's still around. It's version 2 or 3 now, but 1994 that came out. Extensible 3D, which was an XML-based format. November 2005. O3D, which is a JavaScript API from Google. It was released in April 2009. So that's the first sort of place where we're going with JavaScript. The Web Graphics Library was released in March 2011. I'm sure that you're all familiar with the Web Graphics Library. It's great. And then we start getting into what I would call the, the real exciting times. Glam was released in April of 2013, which is GL and Markup, Graphics Library and Markup. React VR was released in December last year, which is React 
plus VR. It's a JSX-based system. So how did I, why am I so interested in this? I went to Direction 16 last year, and a guy called Mark Pesce, who happens to be the guy who co-authored VRML, was talking. And I got really excited. I was super stoked. I was like, yes, virtual reality. I got home. I bought some stuff. I tweeted him. And he went, it doesn't work. <laughs> Nothing works together. All this kit that you've bought doesn't actually run. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Man, did I feel like a dork. <laughs> but December last year, Carmel, which is the Oculus Rift browser, was released and everything started working. Very cool, we're moving quickly. So in December, I could have Christmas or VR. I had both. <laughs> <laughs> now we turn to A-Frame. So I'm, this, the main chunk of this talk is about A-Frame, so I'm gonna spend a bit more time on this. This is the first commit for A-Frame, or the first public commit that I could see. It. This is VR components. Yes, 15th of September 2015. The first stable release of A-Frame, version 0.1.0, 17th of December 2015. So a little over a year ago. What is A-Frame? You can go check it out at aframe.io. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It's a really good resource. Um, there's lots of stuff there which you can go and look at. It's an entity component system. Like I said before, it was released in 2015. What is an entity component system? What does that mean? It's built up of those three things, entities, components, and systems. An entity is a general purpose object that inherently it does nothing, and it renders nothing. Cool. That's what it looks like in code. Cool. A component. A component is a reusable module that you plug into entities to provide behavior, appearance, functionality. It's roughly analogous to CSS. It provides your presentation layer. Components are what you see, what you interact with, and what you actually use within the system. Component. A box, a box. I, I always have a problem with that. A, a box, a box, because it's a frame. Uh. And then the system. So an example of a system is the camera system, which manages all of the entities within the camera component. Provides global scope, services, and management of classes to your components. This is what a system will look like in code. So this is not XML, this is actually in JavaScript. So you can register a component, a component for a, a system for a component, which wraps a component, etc. The main part of your XML, HTML, A HTML stuff is the scene, which is the global object, and all of the entities are contained within your scene. Again, <laughs> makes sense, right? Seeing a pattern. All right, so now that we've talked about that, we can start building things. Yes, can we? No, we can't. Does everyone here have some 3D basics? To build things, we need lights, we need cameras, and objects, but I like to say action because it's better, right? Lights, cameras, and action, yeah! In a 3D scene, those are the components which you need to be able to actually render it. You need light to be able to be able to see the thing, you need the thing to be able to put the light on it, and you need to be able to view it through a camera. So how do we do that in A-Frame? A light is an entity. In this example, we've given it some color. We've made it a directional light, which means that it's just blasting full force. And we give it some intensity. Yes. A camera. Again, we can contain it within an entity. What? normally happens, though, is that you actually wrap your cameras with an entity around it. So you start to scaffold out and have build up items. This allows you to move the entity and have the camera attached to it. 
We've got a position, so a little bit back from us, and we've got a rotation to look back at the origin. We've got a box which has a width, a height, and a depth. You can give it a position, you can give it a rotation, you can do all of those things, and many more. But for now, we'll just leave it at the origin, which is a zero, zero, zero. Put it all together, shake it all around, web pack it, et cetera, go. Woo! This is what the whole thing looks like. This is a 3D scene that you can view in virtual reality, but with A-frame. It's super simple. We've got the scene, which wraps all of our entities. We've got our lights, or light in this case, so that we can see what's in the scene. We've got a camera, so we know where to where to looking. And we've got a box, so that we've got something to look at. Shake it round. Hoorah! It's a box. It's only got one light. Oh no, this is actually the first output I got. I've made a terrible mistake, haven't I? I've got no lights. I've got a direct one directional light only, so you can only see that one. So what happens if we add another couple of lights? Let's put one above it and one from the other side, give them a couple of different colors. Box, colors, great, exciting. Give it something to sit on. This is an entity called a plane, which is a plane. Put it at the origin, rotate it, walk along it. Now box is somewhere to sit on. It's not just floating in free space. Great. <laughs> it's not pretty though, is it? How do we add textures and models? How do you actually bring in things to be able to use them within the A-frame system? Assets. You can define assets in an A-assets block. Again, the naming conventions here are great. Or you can reference them directly. In these slides, I've put everything into A-assets and then reference them using their IDs. So that's the, the way which I've done it here. So it's great. So we put in an A-assets block and we include an image. We give it an ID. And then on our box, we set the source for the texture. Obviously, the texture is awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, there's little mumbles and like, uh. But as you can see, there's still the colored lighting affecting this. The top one is still slightly blue, the left one is still slightly orange, and the right one is still slightly red. So now we can start to build up our entities and compose a system. Here, we're looking at that entity, which contains a box and now an animation. We've pulled the position from the box and put it onto the wrapping entity. So that is where everything is. We've remained no rotation on it, and we've added an animation component. The animation component is to rotate, duration of 3,000 milliseconds, fill it forwards, make it linear, rotate to 0, 360, 0, and keep going forever. Ooh. <laughs> rotating box. Isn't it great? There's no lighting here, because it's hard when you're rotating. You have to rotate everything. OK, so that's all fun and games, right? We've got primitive objects. Um, there's a whole bunch more. I'll take you through a few more in a little bit. But 3D is about models, and it's, a, a, it's about having really cool things in your system. So how do we do that? Same way, you add in the assets and you reference them, and then you can add in the objects. There's a whole bunch of different model types which you can include. Object models, collider models, GLTF models, etc. There's heaps, there's lots of plugins for A-Frame, so you can pull in different types of models if you're modeling in different things. I don't know what most of this means, I'm not a 3D modeler, I just like putting things on the screen and putting my eyes and looking around, it's great. So how do we actually put those in? Same way. This takes a while to load because it's a big model. Come on. There he is. This is straight from the docks. It's an uh, awesome robot man. Here's a tree. <laughs> here's another tree. And here's a box. The box is actually a model and a texture, um, and it automatically composes those for you. It's really, really cool. 
if you go into the A-frame docs, they've got a much better view than my one, which is this awesome thing, and you can look around and see it, which is real exciting. The general use of VR is let's look at something. This is like the most basic when you get VR. You're like, okay, let's take a photo and have a look around the world. Let's see where we are. A-frame gives you an A sky component, which allows you to do this really simply. You can easily build up, um, I had to say the word, but carousels, essentially, <laughs> of components. So you just add in the thing. Well, there we go. So here's a photo I took yesterday using a 3D camera of our great auditorium. So that's literally an assets block, an image, and an A sky component to get that working. Like I said before, there's lots of perimeters which you can include. Spheres. Oh, all of these are rotating, but <laughs> spheres, when they rotate, it doesn't change. <laughs> Cones. Cylinders. And dodecahedron. Who knows what a dodecahedron looks like? James does. That's it. It looks like that when it's yellow and rotating. I don't. <laughs> There's a couple more on this. Who knows what an icosahedron looks like? Ah, uh, not me. It looks like this. It's purple. <laughs> rings, pink rings. This is a flat component. Um, I didn't give it any height. Tetrahedrons and toruses. Really, really cool. There's great resources out there. A-Frame's really, really, really well resourced. The documentation is amazing. Um, awesome A-Frame is a great collection of things which you can look at and see. Uh, there's a couple of people in the community. Um, one of them might or might not be in this room. And they put out a whole bunch of stuff every week. And you can go and have a look at it and learn some more stuff. As you might have noticed, this slide deck was built in A-Frame. I've built the whole thing here because I've got a death wish or something, and I thought, you know, two weeks before the conference, I'll build a slide deck, I'll make the whole thing myself, it'll be fine. And then Raquel came in yesterday morning, and she had that whole speech about not reinventing stuff. And <laughs> so I've added a couple of things um, to the slide deck just for a demonstration using A-frame extras and A-frame physics systems. Those are both systems which you can pull in to your thing and a gamepad control, which is why I've got the controller up here. And it is good enough. It's lots of code, but it's good enough. And you can run down and... Whoop, I forgot to actually put the gravity on. So here's the ladder of learning which we've just gone through. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> Thanks. Um, if you want to see any of these resources, I've put together a little slide there at stevie.co.nz forward slash r. Get it? Stevie R. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it's all on GitHub as well, just Stevie Dash so, Thank you, guys. Yeah. Great, thank you. We have uh, a bit of time for questions. So, are there any questions out there? No questions? Yes. Uh, this specific, I've learned a lot in the last two weeks. <laughs> Let's be serious. Um, I've learned a lot in the last two weeks. I've been playing with A-Frame probably for about three months. I, like I said in my little, like, I got real excited. I came home and I was deflated A after nothing worked. I was so angry. <laughs> but yeah, probably serious time, about 40 hours, 50 hours worth of time. So you can get things built really, really quickly here. Um, it's really easy. It's really nice. All of the APIs make sense. It, it's great, yeah. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Um, I notice there's no shadow. Um, so is, is each object, does it, does it have light on, on each object? Or is there a scene kind of? Yeah, so the shadows, there are shadows. But I had 
so I should have thought about this and I didn't. I had my lights directly above the object and directly from the side, so you couldn't see the shadows actually going off. And then in my actual slide set, I didn't have any lights because it got really complicated and I still had lights everywhere and then trying to turn them on and off. But yeah, you can set up shadows. There are systems for shadows as well. There's a, um, other things which are like fog and view draw distance and things like that are all part of systems which you can pull in to A-frame. Um, which make life really easy. So it's a bit of like pick and choose. There's a basic amount of stuff, and then you can pull in all these other cool systems, which is we are awesome at um, A-Frame on A-Frame.io. It's really, really, really useful. But you get stuck looking at everyone else's work because it's so cool. <laughs> then you spent your six hours of time going, looking at things, and you're like, oh, I'm supposed to be building stuff. <laughs> but yeah, super exciting. Cool. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just so for everyone, it was. Yeah. Um, it was a question about the taxation on the system and the hardware required to actually run these, um, because obviously it's quite, quite running quite a lot of things. Um, a frames built on 3.js, um, which is then put on top of WebGL, so it's all running um, through your graphics card. Um, well, that's what I understand. <laughs> I just use the stuff, it's good fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is quite taxing. Um, that would have taken like 20% of my battery just to display that slide set for the last 25 minutes um, because there's so much stuff going on there. Um, it is a 3D application. It's the same as running a game on your computer. Um, you do need to be careful if you're going to try and use this for actual people um, out in the wild, um, out of a controlled system to be able to put this through to them because you can start using up people's um, batteries quite quickly. Uh, on a phone, same thing. It, it's like running Pokemon Go or something like that. Uh, it's the same amount of taxation on the system. So um, I haven't done any benchmarking. That might all be lies. <laughs> <laughs> well, any other questions? And you have to wait till I run the mic to you, or I'll pass it up. Hang on a minute. Can we just pass the? Uh, ju just the syntax of the library. Is it JavaScript or? So it's um, HTML and then you can put JavaScript in on top of it. So literally like you, you write HTML, HTML-like stuff and then you can control it with JavaScript. Um, so you give your HTML, your A box an ID and then you grab the ID and document or get element and then you can add, um, change things in that. So. Um, yeah, have a look at my disastrous 1500 long line uh, slide generator <laughs> and you'll get a little bit of a better understanding of that. But like I said, the A-frame tutorials are like top class. Um, go and have a look and have a play. Anyone else? You left off a right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not the first time that I've dropped it on the floor. So. <laughs> And it's not the last, so it's okay. Um, I don't know what my work will say about it, but that's what I just said. <laughs> it's fine. Great, thanks. Uh, Stevie, let's give him another round of applause.